if you will come follow me again on some of our activities um, that we have been discussing for these different modules. First of all, uh, we finished up last time, we talked a little bit about outside play and looking at the playground and interesting materials that you might have available for active engagement and developmentally appropriate activity areas um, and that the materials outside even are fun and engaging and that there's plenty of choices for all. So it just kind of follows up with our um, little story we read as well. Again, Ben Franklin said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And then these different questions about centers and we reviewed that last time as well. And this was our assignment last time was sketching the classroom and looking at the um, materials in the classroom. So hopefully you submitted that um, on time. So today we're going to go through the ideas about schedules and routines. Schedules should be designed to promote child engagement. And as we've talked about earlier, when children are engaged with a material or engaged with a peer or an adult, they are less likely to be engaged in challenging behavior. Some of the things that will keep them engaged are, first of all, balancing the activities so there is a mix of small group and large group activities and a mix of a teacher-directed and child-directed activities. Secondly, te teaching children the routine is very important. We can't expect children to follow the routine if we don't teach it to them. Schedules and routines provide some security and a sense of what comes next for children. Children are able to anticipate what will happen and therefore feel more secure. This is especially important for children whose primary language differs from that spoken language in the classroom. So there's different ways you can teach children to follow routines or schedules. Um, you can teach it during circle time using visual cues that all children understand. You can reinforce um, children as they go through the schedule of the day. You can reinforce it. You can provide individual instruction to children who need more assistance and use individualized picture cues, which I've seen done very effectively. You can just be consistent with your schedule and routines. Children will be more likely to learn to follow a schedule if it is implemented consistently. Post your schedule visually and refer to it frequently throughout the day so children learn what will happen next and they will learn where to look in the classroom for that particular schedule. When changes are necessary, prepare children for those changes. And you can prepare children by making announcements at, at opening circle time or using visual prompts on a posted schedule indicating a change, like maybe a stop sign on top of an activity that's not going to actually happen that day. And reminding children about the changes as often as possible. Here's just some photo examples of various types of schedules. And so the next few slides are going to show you these. Here is teaching with a visual schedule so that children can see it visually with pictures. Here's just an individual schedule for a particular child so they can open the little flap and know what comes next throughout the day. Here again is another photograph visual schedule that really helps children see what's coming up and what's next. We're going to, at this time, we are going to watch a little video to show a change in a routine for the children. So you can see when there was a change in the schedule, 
um, how that helped um, when she was saying there's a surprise because there's a change in the schedule. Okay, let's see if I can get off of this big screen. Here's another morning meeting mini schedule that helps children see what comes first and then what's going to happen after that. And I think we've skipped one here. This is a rainy day schedule. Again, here she puts up the rainy day on one of the cars to show that it's going to be a changed schedule. So helping to prepare children ahead of time for a change in the schedule. So um, if we were going to put this into practice, um, there are some different scenarios in the following slides that I've actually put into a discussion forum for us. And I would like you to choose one of these scenarios in the discussion forum and talk about, okay, if this was going to happen, how would you teach this um, particular w something? How would you teach something that would be the correct way to behave or how to, how to work in this scenario? And then um, what would you teach and then how would you teach it? So answer those questions in the discussion form. So you're going to choose one of these scenarios, read it through, and then answer those questions about what would you teach and how would you teach it. And thinking through our um, visual cues, most of these, actually all of them, could be using visual schedule or cues that could address each of these issues. So visual schedules can also be used for families. This slide illustrates a visual schedule that might be used by the family to help their child with the getting ready for school routine. The pictures used in this schedule are available in the Teaching Tools for Young Children product on a particular website, www.challengingbehavior.org. And I'm going to go to that so you can see right where you can find these pictures. So this is the website, www.challengingbehavior.org. And um, if you will go unto if you will go into Browse Resources under What Do You Want to Do, so Browse Resources, and you can scroll down to where it says Tools, and you can find here Creating Teaching Tools for Young Children with Challenging Behaviors, and you can go into this teaching tool, and it will show you different ways to use this. There's a zip file that you can download, um, and so just look through some of the things on this website, not just these teaching tools, but there's a lot of great resources here to help with challenging behaviors. There's some great articles you can read, great research, and some different helps, um, hopefully, for you in the classroom. So let's look at um, planning for transitions. So another issue that is closely related to schedules and routines is transitions. And challenging behaviors often occur during transitions, especially when all children are expected to do the same thing at the same time and then end up waiting with nothing to do. Um, we can find a lot of challenging behaviors during that time. We know from research that children often spend a significant por por proportion of their preschool day making transitions between activities because you really don't want them in, an act, in one activity for a very long time, so they're going to have to transition to another activity. So our goal should be to, first of all, minimize the number of transitions that children have during the day and then plan transitions so that there is a minimal amount of time spent in transition and that children are highly engaged during the transition. We also need to give children a warning before a transition occurs. And then, of course, minimize those transitions during which every child has to do the same thing at the same time. I mean, really, does every child have to go to the bathroom at the same time? Could you, you know, just take a few at a time? Could snack be part of center time? So just some questions to think about. Structure the transition so that children have something to do while they are waiting. Maybe you'll be doing finger plays or songs or guessing games or I spy. You know, so provide some children with chores even and give children helping roles during transitions. So some one child could be handing out paper towels, another child could be holding a door, 
or another child could be helping a friend. So giving them things to do, little chores will help as well. Teach children about the expectations for transitions. Um, this instruction can occur, can occur during a group time and should be reinforced throughout the day. Individualize the instruction and cues provided to children. Some children especially will make the transition with minimal amount of support while others will really need a picture schedule or they'll need a verbal prompt to help them know that it's time for transition. They might even need adult assistance or some other type of cue might help them. So we're going to need to do that for some of the children. Because transition might be a time where children are more likely to have challenging behavior, teachers should consider what individualized strategies can be used during the transition to prevent the likelihood of challenges with children who might have challenges. So in this slide, um, we, we provide here some of the important reasons for using explicit and individualized transition cues. Um, can there be auditory combined with an object or a picture? Um, this might help orient the child. It acts as a reminder of what's next. Um, it helps child go from one location to another. It also allows for predictability and a sense of control. And it helps eliminate dead time for children. On this slide, we reflect on how we ensure that children who have mobility support needs can be supported in the transition. So those with physical disabilities and mobility needs may need some extra support or prevent challenges during transition. So how do you make sure everyone gets where they need to go? How do you keep everyone engaged? Some common environmental strategies that can uh, be used to support transitions are listed here. You can turn off lights to signal a transition and get attention, get the kids' attention, but be sure you don't flick the lights on and off and on and off. You know, that can really send kids into um, some misbehaviors at that time, or also it can send kids into having um, physical uh, things happen to them that we really wouldn't want to have. We could put pictures or line on floor to show children where to line up, whether they need to line up at the sink or lining up to go outside. Use pictures of children to pair kids up for transitions. Um, you can visual cues of how to do a transition um, and we can get some motor actions from a book to have them, you know, let's get in line um, hopping like a kangaroo or, uh, you know, kids could pick or choose different transitions if you have picture cues for them. They can choose what, how they want to transition that particular day. So the following are, show several different types of transition strategies on the following slides. So it's important to provide visual cues and reminders for young children, especially young children with special needs and children whom English is their second language. Visual cues and reminders are useful to help children learn the routines of the classroom, to help them learn the expectations or even classroom rules, to help children anticipate making transitions between activities, and to assist children in knowing what to do during these transitions. As adults, we use visual cues constantly. For example, we look at our watches or the clock to see when a boring meeting will end or when it's time for lunch. When we go into a new building, we look at signs to find places we need to go, such as the elevator or the restroom or location of a conference room. When we go to vote, we look at the visual directions provided to see how to use the voting machine, and we pray that it will work. So here's some examples on this slide of transitions with choices. So um, over here, there's several choices about how to do transitions, and they've decided that, oh, when we transition today, we're going to pretend like we're flying a kite. Um, maybe they would prance like a cat, or maybe fall like a feather, so gently down, or choo-choo like a train. Those are just different ways they could choose how to do their transitions that day. Here's choices for transitions where they get to choose uh, maybe what color foot they're going to stand beside or choose with by, by number. 
um, so this might be a choice here. Here's another video that we're going to watch um, on how to transition outside. they can transition um, to go outside. I also think it may have been helpful if in the classroom there had been some feet along the, um, the floor for the children to know how to stand to go towards the door instead of continually going over the directions. Perhaps it would have been better if there were some directions on the floor for the children to actually stand on. I think that one little girl was asking that she and so the one teacher was telling her but oh in this classroom you just stand right here and there was no visual cue for her to stand somewhere so here's another idea where you could have pictures for the students to know where to sit during circle time here they were very uh, intelligent by covering up the block area for circle time so children were not engaged in playing with the blocks um, during circle time. Here we have another video. And I want you to think about um, what did the teacher do that supported transition and what could the teacher do to improve the transition in this particular video. Get those sprayers out and spray, 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 spray art. I did not. 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 I did what are you going to do today, Victoria? Here we go. Round and around. What will you do today? You want that. I want that. What would you like to do? Only use your finger to point. You! Me. I'm going to take them off. I'm going to see a free table, a super friend today. What else? And half snack. And a computer. And one more. Uh huh. And I'm going to be. Science Center. 
Super Science nice Center. Good girl. We're all done. Give me five. Nice job. Give me five. Give me five, Jay. You to go. Okay, so there was some interesting ways to transition. And so I want you to think about um, what did the teacher do that supported this transition, but also what could the teacher do to improve the transition. And I am sure you all could come up with some great ideas to improve that transition. Here's a way to transition to centers where there's little boxes for the centers and the children's names are on popsicle sticks and they just put their name in the center and where they're going. Another video. Hopefully some of these will be helpful for you. So this teacher had one way of um, getting the child to the work area where she wanted to work with her individually. So she had the picture cue she gave to her to show her what uh, it was her time to do a particular activity. And those usually work rather well. I've seen them work uh, extremely well in the classrooms when I've visited different classrooms. So as we go back, here are some individual schedule ideas. First, they show them what they're going to do first, and then what comes next. How about when they have to take turns, um, and they need to uh, take turns in a particular center. So we need to teach children what to do when they want to play at a center, but the center is full or it's not their turn. And here's some examples here. On the computer, only one person or two people can be there. So they say at this point, it's Adam's turn, and these people are waiting in line. Um, okay, so they have the pictures and their names. Here is where they, um, I can share and take turns, and they actually write their name in and then cross it off when they leave. A clock, there could be a little visual cue about marking a clock, and when, it's, when the hand gets to a particular place, it's someone else's turn. Or then... You could do your little timers as well. And here is at the computer, there's a picture of whose turn it is, and then the timer. Again, timers are great tools for helping children know when the time is up. Transition, warnings, and cues. I'm going to show you one more video, just using a timer. one using the timer and she sang a little song for them um, and so that was one way that you can do some transitions um, there was I used to sing a little song as well when um, the children were cleaning up and I would just sing um, they children love to hear their names and so I would just sing a song like Chelsea is a helper, Chelsea is a helper, she is cleaning up the toys, Chelsea is a helper. And then as soon as I see somebody else start doing it, I would say their name and sing it, Tyler is a helper, 
Tyler is a helper. He is picking up the toys. Tyler is a helper. And just things like that. Children love to hear their name. And when they heard one name, then all of a sudden, they were like, I want my name to be sung. And so they would be out there just um, cleaning up and picking up and making sure I saw them so that their name could be um, sung as well. In this particular slide, there is a, a little activity with a five-minute Velcro glove, and they used a visual cue paired with this auditory cue with a bell. Um, or here's a little individualized glove that the child prefers the potato uh, man. So here's a little video about that. So let's look and see how she uses it. Yeah, okay, boys and girls. Five more minutes to play. Okay, so she was having the children take off for every minute. They were taking off one of the visual cues that were Velcroed on the fingers and um, putting it behind on the back. And so that helped the children learn. And there was a little timer, I don't know if you heard it or not, but a timer who went, that finally went off after the five minutes. Um, but she was counting down for them and she was preparing them for that transition. So if we were in the classroom, we would do this pair and share activity, but since we're not, I want you to think about um, the steps and expectations of a transition from start to finish. What would you want the children to do? And after you think about that, then you need to kind of brainstorm ideas about how to teach the children the steps and expectations of the transition or modify the transition procedures. So um, think about kind of how would you teach them this transition. This slide reminds us that viewing transitions with a prevention lens is important. The questions posed here should guide us to reflect on our transitions. And if, they, if you are preparing to make sure all children can be appropriately engaged in the transition. So how are you helping children in transitional times. Again, I have walked into so many classrooms that are using those visual cues with children, especially individualized children, to show them, you know, just show them a picture of what they need to be doing next, and it helps them as they transition to another activity or to a different center or going outside. So these cues and visual cues are so important to use with children especially those that might prevent challenging behavior or have special needs.